Hello, welcome to People in Perspective. I'm Sebastian Barcenas, and my guest for this edition is Don Franco, a war veteran. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, so you're a veteran, of course, right? That's right. And what kind of high school did you go? I, we, I went to uh, Tilden Tech High in Chicago at uh, 47th and Union. In Chicago. And Right. And they, uh, it was a technical school, and kids would come from all over the city of Chicago to learn welding and machine shop and different types of technical devices. That was good. Were you, so um, how, was, um, how was life in high school? How was it for high school? Yeah. Very good. It was a very good school. I went, it was very highly rated. It is now closed. I think they closed it in last year, and I don't know, they're remodeling it, oh, and I don't know what they're going to do with it. But it's like all schools in Chicago, they're having a difficult time, and I'm sure they're looking for different ways to educate the young people. Yeah. So how were you enlisted in the Army? Were you enlisted or were you uh, drafted? Well, I, I had that at an age of 19 and a half, I probably was looking for a job, couldn't find a job, and a friend and myself decided that we'd join. At the time, it was just the end of the Korean War, and we decided to enlist in the service. And uh, as things would have it, I, I was accepted, and he, he was rejected. So I ended in the service for three years and uh, trained at uh, First, I went to Fort Smith, Arkansas, and, and then went to uh, Fort Leonard Wood, where I was trained as a demolition expert. And uh, uh, after that, we were sent to Camp Kilmer, at, and, and we were all going over to, uh, to uh, Korea to, uh, to defuse uh, unspent bombs. And uh, they called my name out and another fellow's name out, and they sent me to La Rochelle, France, and then I uh, went to Saint Nazaire, France, with 188 transportation headquarters, a purport outfit, which I later ran for three years. How was how was life in the army? Well, for me, it was probably a good thing because I think I was a little undisciplined person. So I think Just what it, it did for me, it, it taught me how to get along with people and how to. Uh, uh, Handle people and uh, and uh, and uh, and <laughs> calm me down somewhat, you know, yeah. which was a good thing. Which was a good thing, because uh, I lived in a pretty tough neighborhood, 48 in Union, which was a pretty rough neighborhood. But as things worked out, it they, it, it was to my benefit, I believe, and I I'm always happy that I was in, and uh, I could have been sent over to Korea, which would have been terrible. So yeah. I was a lucky guy. <laughs> What kind of training did you have to go through to just daily procedures? In the Army? Yeah. Well, for, first of all, you realize that you, you're the lowest of low, yeah. and you have to listen to just about obey everything, things that you probably at one time would never want to do or, or, or would object to. You did them because, you know, if you didn't do them, there was only one place for you to go. <laughs> it wasn't a very nice place. so. Uh, you learn how you learn discipline, and you learn how to uh, survive through things that you uh, probably didn't like to do. And uh, at the time, in the fifties, is when I was in, and, and it was just after the Korean War. There was a lot of a lot of difficult times for for the army. So there was no if ands. You you did what they said or else. You know, but it was a very good it was very good training for me as an individual. You know. Yeah. What, I, go ahead. Oh, what, what kind of weapons did you use? Did you use any weapons? Well, or? we learned how to fire. With at the time it was M we were in a in a, a like an infantry you would consider an infantry. So you learn how to fire the. Some guys learn how to fire the M1. Other people learn how to fire other weapons, and uh, everybody went through training for all that. And you had a very tough physical time because they made you. The, you were up at four in the morning doing calisthenics and. Then going on 25 mile runs with your bed, with your backpack and your weaponry. So it was good for for me. It was good because I, I I think I it made a, a different person out of me. I was kind of it took a lot of the edges off my 
life, you know. That's nice. and and then later I I guess I'll just continue and later I when I got out of the service I sold for two or three companies and which I didn't really like too much and uh, I went into the into a business. I started with six hundred dollars and I started I worked at the time I was single I worked it's selling during the day and at night I'd manufacture the products that they have and uh, which uh, now today we have 50 employees and uh, the company's uh, 54 years old and my son runs it and I still participate in it and uh, we're you know we're very proud of it and, and, and we try to do the best we can for people that work for us. What's the company's name? And the name of the company is Florida Fruit Juices Incorporated. And uh, we do bottling and we, do, we we also bottling of different flavors. We do a lot of business with Aldi. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure everybody's probably heard of them in this area. Yeah. And then we also have, uh, we also make flavors for other companies that do the same thing as we do. What kind of flavors do you sell? Like Any kind that they are, they're interested in. Grape, you know, there's all different types of flavors so uh, whatever they request we try to fulfill for them. What's your most popular flavor? Probably citrus, orange. Citrus. Yeah. Fruit punch? Fruit punch. Well now with the with the changing of the uh, the, the population a lot of it's probably other different exotic fruits, tropicals. There's a lot of that that people like and uh, so we do a, we do a fast amount of different flavors. It's kind of hard to, to yeah. pinpoint one particular one. Just one particular one that everyone yeah. likes. That's good. Well, what else did you do after the Army? What did I do after the Army? Well, I just sold for a while and, I, and then all my time was occupied in trying to build a business. Just I mean, do it, it, when, you, when you have, you have two type of equities. You can have sweat equity, which I had, or, or equity in finances, which I didn't have. So most of, most of my time was uh, just, I would say, probably 16 hours a day was spent trying to build a business. That's, wow. It's, uh, you know, you do, you do anything you have to do to keep things going. And, and uh, it was a, more or less a one-man show for the first four or five years, and then things started to develop for me. That's good. And... Uh, so now, now I, I kind of enjoy the fruits of what I'm what I've done. You know, I go in and harass everybody, <laughs> and then uh, no, I'm just only kidding. But uh, my son runs it, and we're, it, we 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 do well pretty well for ourselves as uh, as a firm. Where we try to do uh, new things and come up with new ideas, which you have to do if you stay in business. That's Other good. than that, I it was just more and more. I, I would say the last fifty-four years of my life has been devoted to my family and number one, and number two to to, to my business. Okay, well, that's all the time we have today. Thank you for joining me on People's Perspective. I'm Sebastian Barcenas. Thanks for watching.